All right, everybody, new video, and there's barely any Lixie in it, I promise. Also, I got married, that was great. And this is a monstrosity. Please kill me. Hot glue, 3D print, duct tape. Ooh, yummy. But what is it? Well, it was a pick a place head that I designed to clip onto an Ender 3. I think that just fell off. Let that be a testament to the quality of this project. This worked. Decent. Holy. Fiducials. Looks good to me. Not too shabby. A little crooked on some of them, but good enough for reflow. So, Lixie boards that I would predominantly use it with have nothing but giant LEDs with about the biggest pin spacing you could possibly have. However, in the coming months here, Lixie Labs will have a third product that uses a 0.4 millimeter pitch uh, pin pitch QFN chip. There's no way around it. That's the only package it comes in, which is fine. Uh, they're easy enough to place and cook in the toaster, but I don't want to place all those myself, so I will commission my crappy laser cutter. Crappy's a mean word. Uh, it just wasn't what I wanted. Uh, my old laser cutter to be a more proper pick-and-place machine. Better than this one. Better. So, basically what I'm gonna do is not use a handheld vacuum tool with duct tape, friction fit into a 3D printed toothed cylinder that is rotated by a stepper motor, and not with a funny spring-loaded bit that gets stuck. I will instead use a NEMA 8 hollow shaft stepper motor on a linear rail uh, that has a Juki nozzle adapter, a real pick and place machine nozzle, uh, which will be moved around on this Core XY gantry. See this? This is bad. If you're gonna make a system like this, this is the manufacturer's design. Don't just do a flat flex cable that I have to bend a billion times to make sure that it is always off of the bed that is, has a laser on it. Uh, the reason that's there is because the end stops are on the head and not at the extremities like they often are. My way around that is I'm gonna use Trinamic drivers on probably a ramps board, not the stock board here, and do the sensorless homing thing. So sensorless homing, instead of having a micro switch, uh, what those drivers do is they, and this sounds bad, but they crash the axis until it cannot go any further. But those drivers are smart enough to know, I just missed a step, I should report that back to Marlin, uh, the firmware. And the firmware says, oh, okay, that's X home. And then same thing for the Y axis, crash it for one step. Okay, that's Y home. Uh, which for a 3D printer, that, that's what the Prusa Mark III does, I believe. For a 3D printer, that's kind of okay because if your print is here or here or here each time, it's not a huge problem. But repeatability is, a, is a, like the core thing of a pick and place machine. So. What I would do is I would do that sensorless homing so that I can eliminate having any end stops mounted anywhere and then do optical homing with the down vision camera uh, to a fiducial mark on the board. That way I can kind of eliminate any strangeness with that sensorless homing if there is any. So if anyone's ever owned this laser engraver, you will know that when I start up this script here and it does some random moves around the bed, it's not normally this quiet. And 
I know some people are thinking, hey, Connor, I have a Prusa Mark III. It's way quieter than that. That's not quiet. And let me tell you, compared to stock, this is really quiet. <laughs> oh, there it is. So what I've done is replaced all of the professional metal bearings with homemade plastic 3D printed ones, which sounds like a horrible idea, doesn't it? But it, it is, but, it, but <laughs> these LM8SUU, I think um, is the name, these bearings would just rattle on these rails when the stepper motors hit whatever resonant frequency of this frame or stepper motor itself. Um, and it was obnoxious. Uh, it was more apparent in slower moves, but yeah, kind of a problem. So for now, for my own sanity, I've just swapped them out with plastic ones. I will put the metal ones back once I have those Trinamic drivers because they are much quieter. And I, if the stepper motor's quiet, everything else is pretty quiet. And I don't have to worry about resonant frequencies slamming bearings around. So that's pretty much it so far in the picket place machine. I am working on an auto feeder design, which currently has no brain, but I'm just testing the mechanical fit of everything. So I have an ESP8266, a no-name stepper driver board, and a cheap stepper motor here. And it's gonna begin to feed this tape through one LED at a time or technically two sprocket holes at a time, which is good enough for me. Uh, my idea for collecting the clear cover tape off is it will wrap around this part right here and go up to a collection wheel, like a pulley uh, with big tall walls on it. And it has a little cinch to hold the start of the tape. And what will happen is there will be a little tiny roller switch right here, similar to the ones you see on your 3D printer, a little micro switch, but they make them with a little metal wheel on the end. So I'll have a plastic guide leading up to that, and then the collection wheel at a slightly different angle. So whenever there's slack in the clear tape, that switch will not be depressed, uh, just me. Uh, because there's slack in the tape now and I have, now I have to deal with it. So the controller uh, will see that that switch is not depressed and will run the collection wheel on another stepper motor until all the slack is removed and that micro switch goes click and clicks down again. Um, so anytime this tape is advanced, it'll have a little slack, it'll recognize that and get rid of the slack and then repeat. Hopefully that's not the bottleneck of the machine. And a couple changes. Obviously getting rid of the flat flex because that's stupid looking. Uh, and adding a cable chain, which every four links of this cable chain was an hour and a half on the printer. And I'm realizing now it's too small, so I gotta make it bigger. But uh, cable chain leading from the print head or the pick and place head to the side here and then back to where the controller and stuff would be. So yeah, uh, it will be my mediocre homemade pick and place machine that is better than the other two mediocre homemade pick and place machines I've made. Um, I've kind of missed doing project videos because for two years now, I've pretty much done Lixie full time. I only briefly went back to a part-time job in the middle of last year. Uh, I kind of miss the days where I would get off from a day job and just sit with one of these for like an hour and just think like, see how dusty it is? It's been a while. And I would just think, what can I do with this? You know, can it, oh, it can detect motion. It can do this. I can make it play MIDI files as you've seen on my channel. Uh, and I haven't had a whole lot of time doing that because when I'm running the Lixie, I have to constantly watch my inventory, do reorders, and manually assemble them. Until recently for the Lixie 2, where we converted to kits so that more people could get them because they were much better designed the second time around. A uh, lot less fragile and yeah. So 
project series, uh, homemade pick and place machine. And before I go, I want to answer at least one question. Is this machine more efficient than just simply sending my boards to China to be assembled? No, of course not. But is it fun? It's so fun. I think, I think it'll be fun. I always like building little ways to automate things and who cares if I don't use it a whole lot in the end or if it doesn't have all the features of a real pick and place machine. It's gonna be a fun little series and we'll learn a lot of stuff together. So I'll probably see you next week. I've got some parts coming in from Robot Dig for like the hollow shaft stepper motor and other stuff. I don't have an upload schedule because I'm not a professional YouTuber. I don't have like an AdSense schedule to uphold to to get my rent paid. I don't even run ads on these videos unless something content IDs me and I they put ads on for me. So I'll see you guys next week. 